So we're talking inside finance, and then we get to 2008 and we see, as we've explored here, policy is playing a bigger and bigger interactive yeah. role, and even now in 2011 you alluded to the Federal Reserve and not having the capacity to stabilize the system. But in this buildup we've also seen big, big swings in oil prices, big swings in food prices. And Andrew Sheng, who appeared at the Bretton Woods Conference, talked about how this mispriced leverage machine playing with other people's money has pushed us to a place that people, uh, environmentalists are concerned about, that we're now using exhaustible resources at too rapid a rate on the, what you might call, uh, drug of credit growth. The first thing is I think we're reaching the end of the cycle of financialization as a growth machine. But parallel to that are two things which I'm less qualified to talk about, so I allude to rather than discuss in detail. One is obviously the point that you make about renewable resources, things like oil, water, air, all those sorts of things. We're reaching certain limits. And the environmental damage issue, whether you believe in climate change or not, is not the issue. The issue is the environmental damage and the sustainability of that damage. All those three events are coinciding. And this debate about whether or not derivatives and artificial activity in terms of speculation has impact on food prices, I think there is strong anecdotal evidence, and I wouldn't put it stronger than that because we need to still look at it. There's strong anecdotal evidence that it does distort those prices. People don't appreciate pushing food prices around. It seems to be just a purely financial or economic issue. But this, we're talking about human lives at the end of the day. We're talking about social disorder. In developing countries, this is the essence of survival. And, uh... In places like Bangladesh, food and energy probably make up over 50% of what people spend. Yes. And so trying to play with that, and these are not people who can afford a small change in that balance. They just don't have the resources, they don't have the savings to fall back, the social infrastructure. And these tensions come through, and you're going to see these, both these tensions at the developing world level, which is life or death, but you're also going to see this in the developed world, like you're seeing in Europe, the riots in Greece and in Spain, not riots so much, but the protests. And these tensions will manifest themselves, A, in terms of governmental changes, but fragmentation of politics in terms of coalition governments, and unfortunately, the rise of extremities in terms of political spectrum. And that's going to create a very, very difficult and very, very different risk climate going forward. And the disappointing thing to me is, A, we don't debate it. B, I watch risk managers play with their numbers rather than think about the bigger picture of how all this changes. And I think those are some of the issues of our time, if you like.